Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Yakara P1 sensor. It's not exactly a new sensor, but with the Yakara FP1 and FP2 sensor not particularly being available or particularly cheap, it's worth taking another look. So what I've got here, I've got some of the older generation sensors as well. So this is the original Akara sensor. And then this is the generation afterwards where it's got the Lux sensor on it as well. This one has the Midja logo on top and this has Akara on top of it. But other than that, they're very similar apart from the Lux sensor. I've been using these sensors now for over five years and they've been rock solid. I've been very happy with them. PIRs are still used in a lot of places, so there's no reason why they don't still have their place. But let's take a look at this one in a bit more detail. So in the box, we've got the sensor. We've got the usual Akara manual, which I never read. And then we've also got a stand. So I can already see without even opening it that it's quite a bit bigger than the older sensors. These two sensors are very similar in size. The original one is very slightly smaller, but very similar. This one, if you look at this, you can see it's quite a bit taller, but still if it's in the corner of a room, it wouldn't matter too much. One difference I see immediately is it's got the logo Akara on the front of the motion sensor here. It's also got the look sensor like this one. I'm trying to look for where the button is. So the button's on the back for this one for pairing, whereas on the older ones it's on the side. So it looks like the first thing we need to do is remove this tab so that the battery activates. Oh, that's quite stiff. Looking at the bottom of this, I can see it takes a CR2450 battery, and I believe it actually takes two of them, so that the lifespan of it is a bit better. So now let's get this paired onto a Zigbee network. I'm going to be using a Sonoff Zigbee coordinator, but you can of course use an Akara gateway or whatever else you have, like a combi stick, for example. So I'm now in Home Assistant. We need to go to Settings, and then we go to Integrations, and then I've got my Sonoff Zigbee here. So let's click here, and now we can do Add Device. So I press the button on the back, and now you can see it's detected it. I've now given it a name, so let's go back and have a look at the device. So you can see here that you've got the detection, you've got the lux setting, and you've also got how long before it redetects. So if we change that, we can change it down to one second or up to 300 seconds, I believe. You can also change the sensitivity here. So if it's on low, then it'll only detect up to two meters or so. And if it's on high, then I think it's six or seven meters. So I'm going to wave my hand in front of it and it's detected. You can now see five seconds later, it's not detected again. So the detection interval seems to be working, which is great. So to change the detection interval and the motion sensitivity, you actually need to press the button on the back for it actually to work. And the way you can see that is that it will either show in the log if it's worked, or otherwise it won't. So let's change this value now. So let's change this to 10. And you can see nothing is showing there. And if I exit out and then go back in again, you can see it's showing 15 again. However, if I now press the button on the back of the sensor and it will flash a few times, so you can see now I've changed it to five seconds and it's shown correctly there. And if I exit out and go back in again, you can see it's stored the five seconds. So you need to do that fairly quickly after you've pressed the button for it to work. So you can see I've just done the same now with the motion sensitivity setting as well and it's changed to high. I've also noticed that the battery percentage has now come through as well, which is great. That didn't come through straight away. Our sensor is now basically set up and we can include it in automations. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn the automations on so that the light turns on and off when motion is detected and cleared. So the first test is going to be at 6 metres and the Akara P1 is set to a 5 second detection time so that it will clear after 5 seconds. The original one you can't adjust that setting so that will clear after a minute or so. Um, but the main thing here is to see the detection distance. The P1 has been set to high sensitivity, so this should be the furthest distance it can detect at around 6 or 7 metres, so it should detect right at the end here. 
So it'll be interesting to see if the original one also does. Okay, so I'm going to move from side to side. There we go, so the original PIR is detected first. Let me move sideways with the other one. And there we go, it has been detected, but it's not as good as the original one. The original one definitely detected first easier. So you can see that the light went off when the sensor went off for the original sensor. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the sensitivity setting on high, but I'm going to walk forwards quite quickly to the 5 meter mark and see which one detects first, how quickly. Interesting. So the new one still didn't detect there. So I'm going to step backwards now and see if it detects or not. No. Okay. So let me do that again. Right, so it did that time. So it definitely seems to struggle between the five and six meter mark. Right, okay, so I'm going to leave the settings the same again, but now I'm going to walk from the six meter to the four meter mark quickly, and let's see if the P1 sensor detects a bit better this time. Okay, there we go. So that was definitely more successful. The original one was slightly quicker, but not by a great deal. Okay, so I've now changed the sensitivity of the P1 to medium from high. So what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to walk from the 6 meter to the 5 meter and see if it detects. We're pretty confident that the original one will work, but that will be a good control. And then let's see if the P1 does. Okay, so the original one detected, but the P1 didn't. Let's try that again. Let's step backwards. Okay, so the P1 still hasn't detected from five meters on medium. So now I'm going to step from six meters to four meters and see if it detects. Right, okay, it does, yeah. Okay, so it seems to be between four and five meters that the P1 detects on medium. I've now set the Akara P1 sensor to low sensitivity. So it'll be interesting to see when it triggers now. Obviously we know that the original one is going to trigger fairly quickly. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is walk from six meters to five meters. And the expectation here is just the original one will turn on and not the P1. Yep. So just as a reminder, this is on low sensitivity now. So we're going to go from six meters now to four meters. Right, that's interesting. So low and medium didn't seem to be very different. Okay, so from four meters to five meters it triggered. So let's try from five meters to four meters again. Okay, so that's worked. I think there's definitely something about sideways motion versus moving towards the sensor. It's definitely more sensitive when you move to the side. There we go. But the odd thing is, is that even on low sensitivity, it still seems to detect at a similar distance to medium. Okay, so I'm at five meters now. I'm going to just step sideways. So it's working at five meters on low sensitivity now. It's definitely on low sensitivity. So now I'm going to try and move sideways at six meters and see if it works. Okay, so it does sometimes detect at six meters on low sensitivity. Let's walk forwards quite quickly and see what happens. So it seems that if you're walking towards the sensor, then it's between three and four meters that it seems to trigger. I'm going to put the sensor back on high sensitivity, and then I'm going to walk towards it quite quickly and see when it triggers then, and see if there's a difference. All right, so the P1's back on to high sensitivity. I'm now going to walk from six meters to three meters fairly quickly directly towards it and see what happens. I would say that that's about the same distance as before, between three and four meters. Well, you can certainly see that the five second detection time works correctly. Well, my conclusions are that this is a great little sensor, just like its predecessors. And if the battery life is anything to go by on these, then you can expect between two and five years of battery life, which I think is great. If you need to have the motion sensitivity less than a minute, then I recommend the new sensor. But otherwise, I'd go for two of the old ones, because you can probably buy two of these for about the price of one of these. Well that's it for today, so please consider subscribing if you haven't already and liking the video. So thanks, until next time.